Let's take a look at the homework questions from section 2.3. And for the very first question, I need to find the greatest common factor for each of the set of the numbers. Uh, so for question 1a, the two numbers I'm given are 12 and 18. So I need to find the greatest common factor, which pretty much means, can you find the biggest number that divides both 12 and 18 at the same time? Uh, you can definitely start with one. One definitely divides both 12 and 18. But is there a bigger number? Uh, probably. Uh, if I try 2, 2 definitely divides 12 and 18. If I keep on moving up, uh, 3 divides 12 and 18. And if I keep on moving up, uh, 6 is the number that I'm thinking that divides both 12 and 16. Sorry, 12 and 18 evenly. And uh, I can't think of a number bigger than 6. So 6 is my greatest common factor for question 1a. Uh, for letter B, this time I have three numbers, so we need to find a number that divides 12, 15, and 18 at the same time, and we want that number as big as possible. That's called the greatest common factor. So let's start off with one. One definitely divides all three numbers. Um, is there a bigger number than that? Um, for sure. Uh, two doesn't work, but let's try three. Does three divide all of these numbers at the same time? It does. Three definitely goes into all three numbers evenly, and uh, I don't, I can't think of a, a number bigger than three that can divide all three numbers at the same time evenly. So, what uh, three is my greatest common factor? Okay, let's try uh, five, eight, and nine. This one's a little bit easier because the only number that can divide all three of these numbers is the number one. So, one is my greatest common factor for letter C. And then moving on to letter D. I have five. I have 15, 25, and 40. So the biggest number that can divide all three of those numbers evenly is the number five. There's not a number bigger or smaller than five that will divide all three of those numbers evenly. So uh, as you can see, uh, if you divide all these numbers by five, you do get no remainder. So five is my greatest common factor. And for letter E, uh, the number that divides all three of these numbers evenly, which is as big as possible, is the number three. Um, 3 definitely divides 15, it divides 18, and divides 24, so 3 is the biggest number that does that, so 3 is the greatest common factor. And for letter F, um, the number that comes uh, to my mind right away is number 6, so 6 definitely divides all 3 of these numbers evenly, and 6 is the biggest number possible, so 6 is the GCF. Alright, let's move on to letter G. For letter G, don't worry about the, the negative sign, just uh, worry about the numbers here, 18, 24, and 30. Uh, definitely one works. Um, is there a bigger number than one? Um, for sure, there's two. Two works. Um, but is there a bigger number than two? Um, yep. Does three work? Yep. Four doesn't work. Five doesn't work. But now I'm thinking about the number six. Does six divide all three of these numbers? It does. And six is actually the biggest number. So if you divide all these numbers by six, six definitely goes into all three of those numbers evenly. So six is my greatest common factor. And for letter H, uh, the biggest number that I'm thinking right away off the top of my head is 15, because 15 will divide the first number, it divides the second number, it divides the third number, and definitely divides the fourth number. So 15 is my greatest common factor. All right, let's move on to letter I. Uh, the number that divides all four of these numbers evenly and as big as possible, um, I'm thinking of probably, probably 12. I think 12 will go into all of these numbers evenly. And I can't think of a number bigger than 12, so 12 is my GCF. And finally, for letter J, um, I have 15, 24, 30, and 42. So the biggest number that comes to my mind is probably the number 3. 3 divides 15, it divides 24, it divides 30, and it divides 42. And I can't think of a number bigger than 3. After 3, you're probably thinking maybe 5 or 6, but... Uh, both those numbers uh, don't divide 15 and 24 at the same time, so 3 is my greatest common factor. So I feel like all the questions on section number 1, um, it just takes a little bit of time and patience. I wouldn't really follow any like formulas or algorithms, just think about the numbers logically, and that's probably the best way to find the greatest common factor for the problems on section 1. Okay, um, question number two is very similar. You want to find numbers that divide the expressions, and you want those numbers or expressions to be as big as possible. For 2a, um, I know there's an x here, and uh, this section will cover variables um, a little bit more, but definitely not for this first one. Um, so look at the numbers. Um, I have 8 and 12. What's the biggest number that, that divides 8 and 12? Well, it's not 1, it's not 2, uh, but it's probably going to be 4. All right, so 4 divides 8 and 12 at the same time, so 4 is my greatest common factor. Okay, now let's take a look at 2b. 
2B is very similar uh, compared to 2A because the 8 and the 12 are the same, but now we have a variable, right? Both terms have a variable x. Okay, so now you're looking at the numbers. So you gotta think about what number divides both 8 and 12 at the same time and as big as possible. Well, that's gonna be 4. And the next question that you need to consider is what's the maximum number of x's that I can remove from both of those terms? Well, since both terms have a single x, then you can remain you can remove a maximum of 1x. So if I combine 4 and x together, it's 4x. 4 is my GCF. So 4x, sorry, 4x is my GCF. Now why does that work? Well, I can divide both expressions by 4x. If I divide both expressions by 4x, I get 2 there and I get 3 there. So 4x is my uh, greatest common factor. Okay, let's take a look at letter C. Uh, you'll notice that for the variables x and y, uh, there's no common variable. x and y are both different, so you only consider the 8 and the 12. And since we kind of did this question already, I know the GCF here is, is simply going to be 4. 4 is the biggest number that divides 8 and 12. Okay, and now let's go into letter D. And hopefully after letter D, you'll have a better understanding of greatest common factor when we're dealing with variables and numbers. Okay, let's take a look at the variables first. There's an x here and an x here, right? So there's an x that's common to both 8xy and 12x. So I can definitely remove one of the x's. And after that, what's the biggest number that divides 8 and 12? Well, that's going to be 4. So my GCF is 4x. All right, so let's take a look at what 4x means. Um, if you have 4x as your GCF, that means you can divide 4x evenly into both expressions. And if you do that, for the first one, you get 2. And then the x's cancel off, and you have a y surviving. So 2y. And then 12x divided by 4x is going to be 3x. All right, so that's how you can divide 4x into both 8xy and 12x. Okay, and now let's get into a few more of these. Um, well, I see an 8 and a 12, so this has come up multiple times already. So I know the biggest number that I can remove from both 8 and 12, or sorry, the biggest number that divides 8 and 12 is going to be 4. Now, when you're looking at the variables, take a look at the x's here. There's two of them here, and there's one of them over here, right? So there's two of them over here and one of them over here. What is the maximum number of x's that you can remove from both expressions at the same time? Can you remove two of them or just one of them? Well, you can only remove one of them, right? Um, you cannot remove two x's from this expression right here, right? So the maximum number of x's that you can remove at the same time from both expressions is just a single x. Uh, the same way here, uh, I have one y there and two y's there. What's the maximum number of y's that you can remove at the same time? Is it y squared, two of them, or is it just one y? Well, it's just a single y, right? So 4xy. All right, and before we continue, since our GCF here is 4xy, what does that mean? It means you can divide both of these, both of these expressions by 4xy, and you should get a nice clean expression. So if I do that, 8 divided by 4 is 2. The y's cancel, and x squared over x is just simply x. It's simply x. And 12 divided by 4 is going to be 3. The x's cancel, and uh, y squared divided by y is 3y. Great. Now, um, now that we've done that question, the key thing here is when you're looking at the variables, x squared and x, you always pick the lowest one. So which one is lower? Is it x squared or is it x? Well, this is lower, right? So that, that's why you'll see the x over there. Okay, so when you're picking variables, uh, make sure when you're finding the greatest common factor for variables, you always pick the variable that has the smaller power, right? This has a power two, this has a power one, you always pick the smaller power. Okay, so knowing that, let's go ahead and do letter F now. Let's start off with the, uh, the 15, the 10, and the 20. What's the biggest number that divides all three of those numbers? Well, the biggest number that I can think of is five. Five definitely divides all three of those numbers. So five is my biggest GCF. Then after that, look at your X's. I have two X's there, one X there, and two X's there. Which one's smaller? Is it two, one, or two? Well, definitely one is the smallest, so this is the biggest number of, or the maximum number of x's that you can remove, which is just a single x. All right, now let's take a look at the y's. I have one there, I have two there, and I have two there. Which is the smallest number of y's? Well, it's just the one y. So one y is the, one, uh, so just a single y is the maximum number of y's that I can remove from all three of those expressions. So that's a very quicker way, that's a very, um, that's a faster way to find GCF when you're dealing with numbers and variables at the same time. 
Okay, let's see if we can do some of these questions a little bit faster now. Um, I have a six and a three. The biggest number that can divide a six and a three is three. So three goes there, three goes there. So three is the biggest number that divides both six and three. And which one's lower, four or five? Well, four is lower, so x to the power four. And which one's lower now for the y's, five or two? Well, y to the power two is the uh, smaller number of y's. So three x to the four y squared is my GCF. Moving on to letter H, I have an eight, I have a 12, I have a 24. What's the biggest number that divides all three of those numbers? Well, that's gonna be a four. So four will start off for my GCF. And now what's smaller, three, one, or two? Well, the one is the smallest number of X's available, so I'll leave an X there. And now let's take a look at the Y's. I have two here, five there, and four there. So this is the smaller number of Y's, so four X Y squared is my GCF. And finally, I have one more here. Let's take a look at the numbers, negative 27, 36, and 54. The biggest number that divides all three of those numbers is gonna be nine. So nine is my uh, number for the GCF. And now let's take a look at the variables. I have two X's, one X, and three X's. So one X is my smallest number of X's. And what about my Y's? There's a three here, a four there, and a two there. This is definitely the smaller number there, so Y to the power two. So nine X Y squared is my GCF. And uh, that's it for uh, question number two. Uh, let's move on to uh, question number three now. All right, so we're gonna do some of the odd letters on question number three, complete each factoring. All right, so I have a six X. The question is six times what will give you 12 X to the power of four? Okay, well, in order, to go, um, in order to go to a six from a 12, what do I have to do this six to get to a 12? Well, I need to multiply by a two, okay? And then ask yourself, what do I need to do this single x to get to an x to the power of four? Well, I need to multiply by x cubed, right? So x times x cubed will give me 12 x to the power of four. Now, so I'm claiming my answer is two x cubed, and how do you check that? Well, what's six times two? That's 12, and what's x times x cubed? That's x to the power of four, which matches that. Okay, so that's how you can check your answer by distributing. Okay, let's move on to uh, letter B here. All right, so I have a two here. All right, so the question is two times what will give you negative six? So two times what will give you negative six? Well, that's gonna be negative three. Okay, and ask yourself one more time, uh, if I have a z squared, let me erase this. If I have a z squared, z squared times what will give you z cubed? So z squared times what will give you z cubed? Well, that's just a single z. And finally, we also have a y here, right? A y, so uh, where can you put the y? Well, the y should be somewhere in here. Maybe I can just put that in the middle. So my answer is negative three y, z. Now, how do you know if this answer is correct or not? Well, three times two, sorry, two times negative three is negative six, and then the y will remain, and then ask yourself, what is z squared times z? Well, that's z cubed. Does that match that? It does, and that's correct. Okay, so that's uh, one way where you can think about it logically. And uh, you can definitely check your answer once you're done. Now, if you wanted to do these questions a little bit faster, let's go back to the very first question here. Um, I know the answer is 2x cubed. Um, in order to get that 2x cubed, all you're really doing is, this 6x is really your GCF. And all you're really doing is you're just dividing this guy by 6x. And if you do that, what's 12 divided by 6? Well, that's 2. All right, what's x to the power of four divided by x? Well, that's two x cubed, or x cubed, sorry. So, but the final answer is two x cubed. So you can get two x cubed really quickly by taking 12 x to the power of four and dividing by the GCF, which is six x. If I apply that to my next question, here's my 10a. So if I divide both sides by 10a, actually I don't really need to divide this side by 10a, but if I divide the left-hand side by 10a, uh, ask yourself, what is 10 Sorry, what is 20 divided by 10? Well, that's two. And what is a cubed divided by a? Well, that's a squared. So this is gonna be two a squared. And if you wanna just check your answer, 10 times two is 20, and a times a squared is a cubed, which matches that. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on. Uh, let's go ahead and just do the odd letters from now on. My GCF here is an eight, so divide that by eight, divide that by eight. That's gonna be a Y plus two, so the Y plus two remains there. 
and you can definitely check your answer by distributing eight times y is eight y and eight times two is plus 16 which matches that all right so that's done uh, letter g here is my gcf so i'm going to divide both sides by four x squared y and divide that by four x squared y okay let's go ahead and figure this out uh, 12 divided by 4 is going to be 3. The x squares and x squares cancel, and the y's and the y's cancel. So um, I'm definitely going to have a uh, 3 here to start. Plus, uh, what is 20 divided by 4? Well, that's going to be 5. Um, now we have x cubed divided by x squared. So 3 minus 2 is 1, so that's going to be a single x. And then y squared divided by y, that's going to be a y. So that's going to be plus 5xy. And you can always check your answer by distributing. 4 times 3 is going to be 12, x squared y. And 4 times 5 is going to be plus 20, x to the 3, y squared, which matches that. All right, so lots of ways where you can check your answer for, from the questions on section 2.3. And finally, letter I. Let's go ahead and do letter I here. Uh, here's my GCF. So let's divide both sides by negative 8, x squared, y squared, and divide that by negative 8, x squared, y squared. And uh, okay, so negative 16 divided by eight is gonna be positive two. And then x cubed divided by x squared is gonna be a single x. And uh, the y squares here, they can simply cancel off. All right, 24 divided by negative eight is gonna be negative three. The x squares can cancel off. All right, four squared divided by four to the power two, sorry, four to the power, sorry, y to the power four <laughs> divided by y to the power two is gonna be y to the power of two. All right, so this is gonna be two x. Um, this is going to be 2x minus 3y squared. Okay, uh, now, now let's move on to question number four. Um, for question number four, uh, you'll see a lot more of these in the homework and on future assessments here. Now you've got to be able to factor out expressions completely now. So here's my first polynomial. Um, how do I factor out the greatest common factor? Well, here's an 18 and a 27. What's the biggest number that divides both 18 and 27? Well, that's going to be a 9. And which one's smaller, x cubed or a single x? Well, a single x is smaller, so 9x is your GCF. Now the question is, how do I pull out the 9x from my original expression? So here's my original expression in yellow. I'm factoring out a 9x. Okay, so what you're doing now is you're just dividing out a 9x here. So 18 divided by 9 is going to be 2. And x cubed, x cubed divided by x is going to be x squared. Okay, if I do 27 divided by 9, well, the minus sign is there. So 27 divided by 9 is going to be 3, and the x squares just cancel off. So my final answer is going to be 9x bracket 2x squared minus 3. Now, how do I check if this is correct or not? Well, I can distribute. 9x times that is going to be 18x cubed. And 9x times negative 3 is going to be negative 27x, which matches the original question. Okay, so that's how you can factor out um, this question completely. Uh, let's do another one over here. Let's try to do as many of these as possible now, because this is kind of like the main thing that you need to do for this particular section. Uh, I have a 24 and an 18. So what's the biggest number that divides 24 and 18? Well, that's going to be a 6. And then what's smaller, a cubed or an a? Well, a is smaller, so you're factoring out a 6a. All right, so what goes in the brackets there? Well, if 6a is your GCF, you're just dividing those guys by 6a. All right, so 24 divided by 6 is going to be 4, and a cubed divided by a is going to be a squared. And then 18 divided by 6 is going to be plus 3, and then the a's just cancel off. So it's going to be 6a times 4a squared plus 3. Okay. Uh, I'm going to skip uh, C for now, and let's try letter D next. Uh, for letter D, here's a 3, a 3, and a negative 6. What's the biggest number that divides all three of those numbers? Well, that's simply going to be a single 3. So that's my so 3 is my GCF, and I can divide all of this by my GCF. And you'll see that 3s cancel off, giving you an x squared. Those 3s cancel off, giving you a plus x. And 6 divided by 3 is going to be 2, but it's going to be negative 2. So uh, that is my final answer for letter D. Okay, let's move on to letter E now. If I, took a, if I take a look at my coefficients 8, 4, and 20, 
What's the biggest number that divides all four of them? All four of the all, sorry. What's the biggest number that divides all three of those numbers? Well, that's going to be a four. So four is my GCF. So if I divide that by four, divide that by four, and divide that by four, let's see what we get. Um, if I do eight divided by four, that's going to be two. So two b squared. Four and the fours cancel, so that's negative b. And twenty divided by four is plus five. So that is my final answer there. And for letter F, uh, my coefficients are 5, 10, and 15. So the biggest number I can divide out of all three of those numbers is a 5. But now we have variables again. So I have 5 C's, 3 C's, and 1 C. What is the smallest number of C's? Well, it's this last guy here, which is a single C. So 5 C is my GCF. Once you have your GCF, I would uh, open up a set of brackets here, and you are dividing everything by your GCF. And if you do this correctly here, um, the fives cancel, C, and then we have C5 over C, which is C to the 4. And then we have 10 divided by 5, which is 2, so negative 2. And then C cubed over C, that's going to be C squared. And then we have 15 divided by 5, which is going to be plus 3. And the C's just cancel off. So there's my final answer for letter F. Okay, let's move on to letter G now. I have a 12 and a 6, so the biggest number that divides both 12 and 6 is going to be 6. And then take a look at the x's. What's smaller, x cubed or a single x? Well, a single x is smaller, so let's leave the x out there. And what's smaller, a single y or two y's? Well, a single y is smaller, so 6xy is my GCF. Now, how do I pull that out of my expression here? Well, it's the same thing as dividing this whole thing by 6xy and dividing that by 6xy. All right, so what's 12 divided by 6? That's going to be 2. What is x cubed divided by x? That's x squared. And you'll notice that the y's cancel off. You'll notice the 6's, they cancel off. The x's cancel off. And finally, what's y squared divided by y? That's just a single y. So 6xy bracket 2x squared plus y. Okay, um, I think maybe the last question I'll do here, uh, I'll, I'll do two more questions. I'll deal with the fractional cases here. Uh, fractions are a little bit harder because uh, there's a little bit more work going on, but uh, if you follow a set of rules, you can probably get the fraction questions correct as well. So when you're dealing with a fraction, what I usually do is I take a look at the coefficients, one-third and four-thirds. So um, usually you can factor out, the general rule I like to pick is what's smaller, one-third or four-thirds? Well, one-third is smaller, so you can pull that out. You always pull out the smaller of the, of the two fractions. After that, look at the variables. Which one's smaller, y squared or a y? Well, this y is smaller, so you can pull that out. So this right here is your GCF, one third y. Now the question is, if you pull it out from the original expression, what does it look like? Now, I know from my previous questions, I was dividing both of these. Um, I would go on and do something like this, like one third y and one third y which is mathematically correct, but it just takes a little bit more work to see what's going on there. So what I normally like to do is I'd look at this bottom number here, which is a, which is a three, and I just multiply everything by that three. And I multiply that by a three, okay? So if I do that, this three and that one third, those just cancel off. And then if I take this y and divide it by that y squared, I get a single y. So y squared, so mathematically you're doing this, y squared over y, which is a single y. That's why I get that y there. And then after, if I take this three, and if I multiply it over here, this three and that three will cancel off, giving you this four, so minus four. And um, if you look at this y here, and uh, if I take this y and divide it by my GCF, I just get a one. So this is four times one, which is simply just four. So basically this is gonna be my final answer here, one third times y minus four. Now I know this answer is correct because if I highlight my GCF and multiply it through, one third y times y is one third y squared, which is that guy right there. And then if I times one third by four, so if I take one third y and times it by negative four, I get negative four over three y, which matches that. So that's how you can factor out a fraction there. Now, um, factoring out fractions isn't a big part of the Math 10 curriculum. You'll see more of this uh, next year, but that's just uh, one way where you can pull out the uh, fractions there. Okay.